height and breadth and length of love is found in Him. In the Lord, the Lord alone, our righteousness and strength. In the Lord, in the Lord
Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. I want to start off with a few announcements. First of all, thank you for those who responded last week and offered to learn about hosting Zoom. We will be arranging an orientation center uh, session. If you would like to know what is involved before offering to help out, you are welcome to take part in the orientation. So please contact Pastor Joel for more information about that. And a few upcoming events I want to draw your attention to. On March 21st, we will have our AGM. A report is available at the church or online. Please register uh, by contacting uh, staff by email or phone if you're interested in attending the AGM in person and the rest of us will join by Zoom. On March 25th, we have the next Achievers Luncheon coming up with our guest speaker, Reverend Rob, Rob Ogilvy, and he is our executive minister of our denomination. So that'll be nice to hear from Rob on March 25th. And on March 28th, that's a Sunday evening at 7 p.m., we will also be having an Easter Alleluia concert. It will be by Zoom. There are a few posters that are available for distribution, and there's also going to be a poster on our church website. If you would like an electronic version of the poster so you can email it or share it with others, uh, please feel free to contact Pastor John uh, for that. And so I just want to wrap up with a few reminders about today. If you are following along on the Psalms coloring pages throughout Lent, today is the third Sunday of Lent and we are coloring Psalm 19. So I invite you to do that and take part in that if you'd like. And uh, if you wanted the visual, that's there as well for Psalm 19 to color along today. And if you haven't had a chance to print it off, you can find it either in the email sent to the parents for the kids, as well as in our uh, first this week. Uh, you can find the Psalms coloring pages and print them off. Finally, today is Communion Sunday. So if you're joining online and haven't already done so, this would be a great time to grab uh, bread and drink for our communion time following the sermon. So let's prepare our hearts for worship now. All heaven and earth proclaim the majesty of God's creative power. Praise God for the awesome beauty. Rejoice, for the Lord our God is good. Praise God for the Lord's abounding love poured down on us. This is the day that the Lord has made. The snow is melting, the puddles are pooling, and the mud is beginning to make its annual appearance. We are now in our third Sunday in Lent, and we can sense that both Easter and spring are on the horizon. This is the day that the Lord has made. As we gather virtually and in socially different, distant manners together, may we worship the Lord our God. Let's pray. O oh Lord our God, thank you for sending Jesus to this earth that we may have hope, that our lives may be changed, and that we may pray to you now, knowing that one day we will converse with you in person. Bless our time today, Lord. Be present with us and help us to not forget that the other worships with us. It is in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen. Welcome. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Sing, Come Thou Almighty King.
You may be seated. <laughs> we really mean it. John and I agree. <laughs> I wonder if you can see my little friends here. I wonder who these people are. I wonder if they're different ages. I wonder if maybe they live in the same house, or maybe, oh, maybe they are in school together, or maybe they're outside in the playground. I wonder, who do you think ha usually has to listen to the others I wonder what you think, who usually, has to, who usually ends up telling the others what to do? Now, if there are different ages, if this person's oldest, you're probably right. I suppose this person most of the time tells the others what to do. And I suppose most of the time this, this little person has to listen most of the time. But, you know, just because you're shorter, you know, you ask Coach Mark, and just because they're taller than you doesn't mean they don't have to listen to you. But you're right. Probably most of the time, the person who's older has to be listened to. On the other hand, I live in a house with a, a person where we have this kind of, you know, different ages and different heights, and, and this person will say, I am not eating that. And this person will say, I am not going to bed right now. <laughs> Does that happen in your house too? Yeah? Hmm. I know that most of the time, you guys do a very good job of listening. I know that because I've watched you here, and I talk to your parents as well. I know that most of the time, when your parents ask you to do something, you do it. And I'm sure that's true at school as well. Now, maybe you're thinking, one day... I'm going to be the tall person, and then I'm going to make chocolate cake for breakfast, and I'm going to watch cartoons and play video games all day. Uh, Jesus said, if you want to be part of my kingdom, you need to be like this person. We need to listen to one another and do the things that other people ask us to do. We need to trust other people and let them take care of us. And sometimes maybe that feels frustrating, right? I've seen how sometimes the, the, the little people in the home aren't, aren't really happy <laughs> to be told what to do or to have other people get to say what they do. But Jesus said, we all have to be this way even the adults. That's really, really hard to listen because so often I think I know what's best and I think I'm right. Uh, but Jesus said, I need to listen to other people. So keep practicing. Maybe it'll be easier for you when you're older if you practice listening now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for the gift that they are to this congregation. And we can't wait to see how they've grown and matured. But we pray that as they grow, that they would let Jesus teach them what it means to love other people, what it means to put other people first, what it means to, to be part of a family under Jesus. And we pray that even though as adults we're sort of set in our ways, that you would help us to humble ourselves, to put others first, to submit. We pray all of this for your glory. Amen.
Good morning. The reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. In your pew Bible, this is page 166 of the New Testament. Christ, the power and wisdom of God. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Our responsorial reading today is from Psalm chapter 19, verses 7 to 10. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, and dripping of the honeycomb. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 50. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel lesson. In your pew Bible, this is page 45 of the New Testament. Jesus again foretells his death and resurrection. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about upon the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him, because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of those little ones who believe in me, 
It would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off, for it is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Father, as we gather around this, your word, we ask that your spirit would abound. Lord, might you speak to us, encourage us, challenge us, convict and call us once again to be a people living profoundly in your kingdom. To your praise and your glory, we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I hope that your hope, as I hope my hope continues to be, in the finished work of Christ for us on our behalf, and secondly, and also that we would be and continue to be the salt and this light that he has called us to be. One of the beautiful themes that we find picked up within, and I, I note this often, bear with me, uh, in the Gospel of John is this beautiful picture of Jesus being sent by the Father. And then this note that Jesus passes on to his disciples. As the Father has sent me, so now I also send you. Jesus has come as the one sent. He has come as light. He has come as uh, salt, if you will, into this world. He has come to redeem and to bless and to save and to call. And Luke's gospel, to seek and to save that which was lost. The call and the encouragement is for us to continue this work that Jesus Christ has begun. The last verse that was read, salt is good. Uh, I tend to like salt. Uh, salt goes fast at our house. Uh, I think Julie uses most of it uh, most of the time. But it's been noted sometimes it'll go quickly. Uh, but salt is good for preserving. Salt has a usefulness. Uh, one of the interesting pieces at this time, and maybe true in our time and our culture as well, that though salt is good, but if it has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? And salt used to be adulterated. It used to be altered uh, by those who were selling in order to use less to save money, and those buying the salt weren't getting the full effect of what the salt was meant to do, of what it could do, of what it was supposed to do, because it had been tampered, adulterated, had other things added to it. Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Jesus has shared with the disciples, not the first time he has shared this, as they're traveling and he's teaching them and he says the son of man is to be betrayed into human hands and they will kill him and three days after being killed he will rise again this concept of being betrayed and we might think of judas who betrayed jesus with a kiss for 30 pieces of silver but the fuller context and understanding also indicates that this betrayal, this handing over of Jesus, 
has been okayed and ordained by God the Father and has been picked up by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. There's a willingness in the heart of God and in the life of Christ to be betrayed, to be handed over into human hands and to be killed. One of the fascinating concepts and images and wonders of the good news we find in scripture is that God has become man, human, and has opted, chosen, willingly to lay down his life for us. To be betrayed, to be handed over by God himself into the human hands who will kill him in three days after being killed. He will rise again. And there's this beautiful promise and the promise of presence that Jesus gives elsewhere in the Gospels and picked up in the uh, book of Acts. We find Jesus promised to the disciples that he will meet them again following his death and resurrection. At this time, they did not understand what he was saying and they were afraid to ask. Jesus, whom they had been journeying with for some time, once again has indicated, has shared what is going to take place. They're hesitant to speak about it. Perhaps a bit of denial, perhaps a bit of uncertainty, perhaps a hope that this might not be true. And so they don't speak. And then they journey on. And as they're traveling, most likely with Jesus in the lead and his disciples following him as students would a rabbi, there's a wonderful image that's given of, uh, or a picture or a wording that uh, speaks of uh, being covered in or being in the dust of your rabbi, and that a student would follow the rabbi wherever the rabbi went, and the dust of the rabbi would be kicked up on the disciple. Chances are, as their rabbi, Jesus would have been out in the lead and they would have been following behind him as Jesus leads them to Capernaum into a house. And when they get there, Jesus asks, what were you arguing about on the way? The comparison isn't perfect or fair, but... How would you feel if your pastors were aware of every conversation you had? Hopefully you'd feel comfortable. (laughs) Maybe you would not. How would you feel if your loved ones were aware of all of your conversations, especially those that were perhaps a bit off track of what they ought to have been? Jesus has shared that he, the Son of God, will be betrayed and killed. We get this beautiful image and picture picked up of Jesus, the Son of God, as Paul writes, who though equal with God did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but humbled himself, even to the point of death, even death on a cross. One of the most, if not the most, humiliating ways one could die. And so we have this example of Christ who is going to be betrayed as God into human hands, be killed, and following this sharing, the disciples are discussing or arguing among themselves who it is that will be the greatest. Who is number one? Who is the most blessed and or efficient or loved within this group? Who is the favored? Who is the greatest one? When Jesus asked them what it was that they were arguing about, this being it, they were silent. And Jesus sat down, meaning he is going to teach. And he calls the twelve. And he says, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. One of the ways that we be salt in this world, one of the ways that we bless and continue the work of Christ in our midst is to humble ourselves before others, 
to not consider ourselves better than, greater than, above others. But following the example of Christ to allow ourselves to be the servant, the bondservant, the slave of all to give our lives to the work of building up the kingdom of God, to the proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And Jesus takes a little child, one who normally would not have much of a voice. I appreciated the children's blessing and story. Our, our, our children are older now for the most part, and we got one younger one still at home whom I won't say much about because uh, I, I need to go home uh, here soon. Um, but they do try to get their voice heard, and as they grow, that voice gains more prominence, uh, gains more weight, if you will, uh, to a degree. They're at a home. There's a child here whose voice would have been not the voice to always, if ever, be heard over the other voices. One who did not have position within the house. And Jesus puts this child among them, having taken the child in his arms and says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Jesus does elsewhere teach and encourage, and we pick up this picture of children and becoming like children in order to enter the kingdom of God. Within our context here, to become one who is willing to not always need to be the lead out front, one who does not need to have the position or the status over another, one who does not need to have their voice always heard and obeyed, one who is willing to submit and find their place as a servant within the household, within the community, within the kingdom of God. Not going to take much time to note the short account of a couple of verses with one other who is doing these works in verse 38 and following in the name of Christ. And they stop the other because he was not following us. He was not one of us. He was not part of our group. Just because somebody may appear to, in status, economics, position, be less than, or because one might not be connected closely with you and I, does not rule them out, does not make them insignificant in the work of the kingdom, does not cause them to be second class in any way, shape, or form. No one who does a deed of power, says Jesus in my name, will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will be, by no means lose the reward. Now the beautiful piece that there's no work that is less than. Sometimes we may want to be seen as the greatest, and to be seen as the greatest is to have our voice heard and to have the job and the deed or the position that is noticed and noticeable by others. But again, the call is to be a servant, to be doing our work for the glory of the Lord and not for self, to find ourselves being willing to do the menial task to those who might seem to be the menial people, those on the edges and the outskirts, those without a voice, a position and a task, a deed and a purpose which might not bring us a lot of recognition. And Jesus talks about the cost and the importance of living this life in the kingdom. And not to put a stumbling block before any of these, and he says in verse 42, little ones who believe in me, these little ones may be again picking up the idea of the children or of new believers or followers. Ones whose voices are minor and may appear to be insignificant, are valuable. 
And if any causes one of these little ones to stumble, Jesus notes that it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. That sounds pretty serious. Remember when I first started reading through the Gospels when I got my Gideon's New Testament in grade five at 10 years old and started to learn about the Lord and the Gospels and what it was that he was all about. And I came across this passage. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. If your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. And I really question whether I wanted to be a part of <laughs> this. What is this? What is happening here? What is going on? We need to take serious our call to be salt, our call to be light. We need to hear profoundly within us the words of Christ, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you. But the way I send you is not a way of glory and power and position and status and having your voice heard. It's a way of servanthood. It's a way of the cross. It's a way of surrender. It's a way of love for the other, even those whom we might see as insignificant. These little ones, our lives are to become a means of others seeing and finding Jesus Christ, even in a simple task of giving a drink of water. And those who do so will by no means lose the reward. Sometimes the reward that we want is to be the greatest, to be the noticed one, to be the one out front. But the reward that will be found is in and through service to the other, service to the least of these, service that will cost us our own arrogance, our own self-centeredness, our own life. It's better to surrender. It's better to cast off as Paul writes these sins which cling to us and enter into the kingdom of God as a servant than to try to maintain some dignity and status in the eyes of this world and find ourselves uh, quite literally with the analogies here on the outside of God's city at the garbage heap that is always burning or those who have chosen to live for self and not for God in this case are found. Those who are not willing to humble themselves for the sake and for the purpose of God. The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands. They will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. Are we willing to lay our lives down? Are we willing to take the role of a slave and or a servant in the kingdom of God? Are we willing to be the salt and the light in this world by glorifying Christ and not self? Are we willing to render our voice unheard that the voice of Christ might be heard and seen through our deeds and our actions? Are we willing be open about our own shortcomings and failures, weaknesses, in order that we might cast them off and fulfill the work of the kingdom of God. Might we take up our cross and follow Christ. Might we be pure salt in this world. To his praise and to his glory, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing more love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Let's stand together.
join in the reciting of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated. We read in Paul's account as he writes to the church at Corinth, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, Paul records that when he gave him thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Father, as we prepare to come around this, your table, we recognize the sacrifice that you have given, the laying down of your life for us that we might find life, that we might have life, the wages of sin being death, but the gift of God being eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We recognize this broken body in this bread, 
and your shed blood in this cup as being for our healing, for our deliverance, for our life. And Lord, we come before you today realizing our need of your forgiveness, our need of your grace. As a people who have fallen short even this day, Lord, we recognize that in us was nothing good to warrant your sacrifice. In us was nothing holy to warrant the gift of your holy life on our behalf. But Lord, in your grace, you chose to lay down your life for an unworthy people, for people who have chased the things of this world, who have sought positions over others, status over servanthood, accolades over discipleship. So Lord, we present ourselves to you with our failures and our shortcomings as we prepare together around this table. And we thank you for the gift of Christ. We thank you for the promise of your word that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we present ourselves to you today. Forgive us. Cleanse us, call us, renew us once again. To your praise and to your glory we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the great Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving that is written in your bulletin and or will be shared on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and good, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Lord, Holy Father, creator of heaven and earth, the one who has created all things and sustains all things. And when things in and through our disobedience went astray, you chose in your love and your grace to redeem all things once again onto yourself to make reconciliation possible by the blood of your cross. And Lord, for this, we give you praise. We praise you joining the angels of heaven, all our sisters and brothers around the world, the faithful departed. We think of Ruth Johnstone. We think of Margaret Zolkowski at this time and others that come to mind, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus who came and will come again in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you as we come in prayer together as God's people to participate. When I say, Lord, in your mercy to respond, hear our prayer. Creator of heaven and earth, you have welcomed us to your table through your Son, and by your Holy Spirit, we are caught up into the company of heaven in this moment. And just like this life-giving meal, our very lives and this planet, they are your gift to us. Who are we that you are mindful of us and yet you distinguish us one from another? You know each of us by name. May we love one another and everyone we meet as you love us. And may you hear our prayers for those from our midst who are on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for Natasha Ski and the child she is carrying. We pray that you would bless them with good health through this pregnancy, through to a safe delivery at the end. And likewise, we pray especially for Nicole as she waits in hospital. Keep her safe there and may the sun within her continue to grow in health and strength until the right time for his birth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those with cancer in our congregation, for Carol, Barry, Merv, Reed, for Bonita's colleague's wife. We pray that you would grant them peace and strength through the effects of their treatments and through any surgery. We pray that you would heal their bodies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those recovering from surgery, for Lois and Diane, that you would keep them from pain and restore their strength. We lift up those dealing with chronic pain for Martha and Alice and Eva, for many others. Have mercy and grant them respite. May they find in you grace sufficient for each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for Catepua Lake Camp staff, for Ethan and Ryan and Peyton. Grant them creativity and diligence and prayerfulness as they build up the camp and work through the challenges created by the pandemic. We pray for all the young people connected to this camp and who will be connected, that you would strengthen their faith and grow in them a love for Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are waiting on officials to process paperwork at immigration, for Cana and Nineveh, for Rob, for Jabril's family in Burundi, and especially for Raid and his wife and small children in the refugee tents in Lebanon's mountains. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we lift up the nation of Burma. We have heard firsthand about the ruthlessness and the corruption of the Burmese government from our Karen brothers and sisters. Lord, may the leaders repent of their violence and oppression. May the government be filled instead with people who will put the welfare of all people ahead of their own personal gain. And we pray the same for Lebanon and for our friends there. Transform and heal this country. Raise up judges and leaders who are not swayed by money but rather seek the welfare of everyone. And bless the work of the church to bring peace and to care for refugees. And bless especially Imad and Almes, and Joe and Alexi and their children. May their ministry and the ministry of the Lebanese Society for S Social Development and the ministry of the seminary continue to bear fruit in Lebanon and across the Middle East Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we gather up all these prayers, and we pray with the church around the world and across time, as you taught us, your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen
Lord Jesus Christ, you came to set us free from sin, death, and the devil. With love, we offer ourselves to you fully and completely as living sacrifices as we proclaim the good news. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. One means of symbolizing and showing our ongoing sacrifice to the work and the ministry of Christ, we bring now our offerings unto the Lord to be used in the building up and the furtherance of his kingdom here on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. Be with us as we take this bread and cup as genuine symbols of the body and blood of Jesus. Unite us to Jesus and bring us in the end with all the faithful to resurrection and everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. And for those here in the sanctuary, we will invite at the direction of the ushers to come forward and receive the bread and the cup. This morning, we will place the bread in your hands and give you a cup and then direct you to a place to partake this morning.
In Psalm 107, verse 8, it says, Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds. Let's stand together as we sing For the Beauty of the Earth. The church at Corinth, Paul wrote, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May the Lord lead you forth this week in service to him, to his praise, and to his glory, and to the renewing of your life in him. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>